Hello, I'm Dr. Libya Scheller. I'm the medical director at the Institute of Medical Education and Research, and today I have Dr. Oliver Sartor at the uh, Labordi uh, Endowed Professor of Cancer Research, Tulane University School of Medicine. Thank you so much for um, being here today. Can you tell us a little bit about your background? Well, I'm a medical oncologist. Um, I trained, uh, got my MD at Tulane University, internal medicine, Tulane University. Then went to the National Cancer Institute, was there for seven years, and did a lot of clinical trials, started to focus on prostate cancer about 1990. Uh, came back to Louisiana, uh, mm -hmm. was at the Louisiana State University, and was eventually the director of the LSU Cancer Center. Um, a little problem called Katrina arose, and I ended up going to Boston, was at the Dana Farber mm -hmm. Cancer Institute for nearly two years. And then back to New Orleans, and mm -hmm. that time I chose Tulane, and uh, some professor at Tulane, and I've been there since 2008. Mm -hmm. um, Wonderful. So you've seen a lot of changes in the past uh, years in the field of medical oncology. Can you tell us a little bit about the history of what, uh, how it was a couple of years ago and where we are today? Because it's very exciting times now to be a medical uh, oncologist. I'm actually going to go back more than a couple of years. I'm going to go back to about 1990 mm -hmm. when I first started to work in the field. And at that point, there basically was nothing that had been shown to be effective in advanced prostate cancer. And of course, we set about working on that problem. And the beginning of the progress was really some of the radiopharmaceuticals. We had things like strontium-89, which showed some bit of effect. Subsequently, a little bit later in trials that I were involved with, with the Samarium-153. But of course, we had nothing that would prolong survival. And that was true until 2004, when finally we had docetaxel that was shown mm -hmm. to prolong survival. After that, we sort of had a hope that, okay, if we did it once, we can do it again. But I think that the progress in the last couple of years would never have been anticipated. Mm -hmm. Think about all the different mechanisms of action that we have for these new drugs. We have a immunotherapy, the first immunotherapy to show prolongation and survival in metastatic cancer. We have a novel radiopharmaceutical that will be coming this way, the first alpha particle. We have new hormones. We have new chemotherapies. And to think that prostate cancer, which was a little bit of a backwater when it came to medical oncology, would now be a leading area of medical oncology with immunotherapies and new drugs and alpha particles you know, all of a sudden, we've got a whole different perspective, and it's really one of optimism. Mm -hmm. So I'm delighted that I've stuck it out this, you know, 20 plus years mm -hmm. in the disease to see all the changes that have occurred recently. Mm -hmm. um, one of the things that's very important is to stay abreast of all the new treatments, and mm -hmm. you mentioned and you touched on a, a couple of them. What do you think are the biggest challenges today in education to make sure that, you know, fellows and medical oncologists stay abreast of the leading uh, information? Well, first of all, I think it's a little bit confusing. Because, you know, we've taken a disease, prostate cancer, and now we've sort of segmented into all these different levels. Mm -hmm. So now we have a therapy very specifically for the asymptomatic, minimally symptomatic, castrate-resistant prostate cancer. And then we have other ones that are in the post-docetaxel space. So you almost have to be familiar with the field in order to understand how the drug should be properly used. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, just as soon as you figure out, it changes. So. Mm -hmm. Not only are we sort of bedeviling our colleagues with the complexity of our disease now, it's also changing so rapidly that if you're not in the field, it's, you know, it's almost likely that you're going to be confused. Mm -hmm. Can you talk a little bit more about the importance of the multidisciplinary team in um, treating the patient with prostate cancer? Yeah, well, very interesting point. So almost all prostate cancer patients are diagnosed and initially treated by a urologist. And then at some point, we enter into these advanced therapies. And these advanced therapies are often done in the hands of a medical oncologist. So things like the docetaxel, cabastaxel, that's chemotherapy. That's what the medical oncologists do. I think the optimal issue is to create a multidisciplinary team. And then that way, the medical oncologist and the urologist are talking to one another. They're in the same clinic. And that's what I have at Tulane. So, mm -hmm. I'm part of a multidisciplinary clinic, and many academic centers are. But it turns out that even if you're not in the same place at the same time, you ought to be talking to each other. Because the truth is that these patients go back and forth. There are a lot of issues that are more strictly urologic, things like dif difficulty with ureteral obstruction, urethral obstruction, 
that require urologic intervention. At the same time, we're taking care of these advanced patients, and we're giving them chemotherapy. So as we go back and forth, the truth is two is better than one. Urologist plus medical oncologist is better than either one alone. Can you a little touch, uh, touch upon um, the video viewpoints that we uh, just uh, finished taping? Can you um, talk a little bit about the importance of uh, the medical oncologists in viewing all the different four parts um, to the video po viewpoints on prostate cancer? Well, you know, one of the interesting things about prostate cancer, as I alluded to a moment ago, is the fact is that we're beginning to really segment this disease into different components. You know, we talk about the M0 CRPC, the non-metastatic CRPC. We talk about the post-docetaxel CRPC. We talk about all the new agents. We talk about the metastatic but asymptomatic CRPC. Mm -hmm. And now it's important to recognize these different aspects of the disease states so we can choose the right therapy at the right time. And if you hear all four components of the video, you begin to see how it all fits together nicely. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you very much for your time today.